Hi everyone, Alba here. This is my guide to the Night Revels Festival. There are two main goals in this festival and reasons why you should be playing this. One is XP and two is the items. During the event, it takes place in Harris Juresco. You'll see it turns dark. First thing we need to do though is this quest. You can do the challenge quests up to five levels above the highest player for maximum rewards. Or you can just do it at level. I will explain why and when you should do each. Everything starts with this first quest. You must complete this quest to farm out Night Revel keys. Or you can just buy them in the DDO store. This was this is what you need to get access to all of the other challenges. This quest is straightforward. If you just stick to the path, the quest objectives will open as you go along. You don't have to worry about it. If you step up the path, it will spawn more groups of monsters. This will not help you with getting more stars, but it will give you an extra chance at getting chocolate or night revel keys. So you might want to consider that. Now I'm going to explain the main mechanics of farming all of these challenges. First one is XP. The first time you complete any of the challenges, you will get a big boost for XP. This only happens on the first time you complete it. That means you might want to do it on the hardest difficulty possible, that means five levels above you the first time, to get the maximum XP bonus. If you do not feel comfortable doing it five levels above, you can do it two or three levels above. Either way, it's very good. If you do one of the challenges and see that two or three levels above is too easy or too hard, you can then change it for the rest of the challenges. A safe spot is about two or three levels above your current level if you're not sure. By the way, the monsters in this quest will change based on the di difficulty level. If it's level 11 and above, everything here is specters and shadows. And unlike now that it's all zombies and ghouls and skeleton. The second objective is the ingredient you farm. So in this case, we're farming chocolate. This is the main quest where I farm chocolate. And while you will have an abundance of chocolate, the other main ingredient you get here is Night Revel Keys. It does not seem to have any benefit to do it on a higher level. So if you're just going for keys, you should do it at your current level. For me at least, it seemed to be it that I had better luck at getting keys when I was doing it at level. So once you've completed this quest one time on the highest difficulty possible for you, you should just step down to your current difficulty if you want to farm keys. As you progress through this level, the way will open up, you can kill more monsters, and you'll get more stars. Eventually, you will kill the second boss and end this quest. By the way, if you have the draft of Midnight and you want to farm monsters in this quest, you probably should go off the beaten path and kill all the monsters. You don't respawn, but just get all the monsters you can in one run. If after all you're just going for chocolate and keys, killing monsters is all you're looking for. You can even do it after you finish both bosses and complete the quest. Once you've completed this quest once, you'll always get the same fixed amount of XP. When it comes to farming the challenges, over there there's a fixed score for ingredients per challenge. If you want the exact amounts, you'll have to look them up in the wiki. Every level above your current level will give you an extra 10% to the score on the ingredients. Up to 5 levels will give you 50% on the total score of your ingredients. In the challenges, you do not have to care about kills. Kills does not help you. The only thing you care about is the star objectives, as they are the ones who are going to give you the stars and therefore the ingredients. The bonus is calculated by the highest player in the group. So the character of the highest level in the group is the one who's going to determine how difficult and how much of a score you will get. If there is a gap between players of more than four levels, the low level player will suffer a penalty and will not get rewards. Keep in mind that if you're having a hard time completing the quest 
might be faster to drop down the difficulty score and run it twice versus trying to do it once and taking more than twice the amount of time. So be cautious of how powerful you are when it comes to playing this quest. In general, all of these quests favor players who can do splash damage. If you are very good at single target damage, you will probably not be as efficient at cleaning out any of these challenges. The vast majority of what you're killing is just trash. So being able to do splash damage will make a big difference. Powerful players with lots of splash damage can chop through these challenges in absolutely no time. And if you are a single target player, well, you might be slugging through these very slowly, having to target every one of these trash mobs. As you can see, this first quest took me only like five minutes. It shouldn't take you much more than that. It's pretty quick. And the main goal is to get the Night Revel keys. Here you can see I have two keys. That means I can do two of the challenge quests. Unlike the opening quest, the other quests where you care about the ingredients, you should try to do always, even after your first burst of XP, on at least two to three levels above. If possible, five. This will give you the maximum amount of ingredients per run, or rather per key. And since you have to farm the keys, the more ingredients you can get, the better. This is the area with all of the challenges. They're divided up into groups of two. There'll be two for each type of candy. So if you can't stand one of the quests, you can do the other one. Based on the reception of this video, I might consider doing a single video for each one of these little challenges showing how to do a farm style run. This one you must face against the dragon if you want to get spectral dragon scales. These are also considered an ingredient. Now to the rewards. There's wares and consumables. We'll start with the consumables. First up we have uh, these rubies. There's three types. First one is Ghost Pain, who makes your weapon Ghost Touch and gives you 1d6 undead. Also, there's Vampire Slayer, who is 1d4 light plus silver. And there's Endless Light, who gives one negative level on Vorpal. We have Enhanced Weapon. This is basically on any stock weapon, just like Festival Frost. And only one enhancement you can put on a non-named -we weapon. These three are buffs. One gives you melee and ranged power and also plus 10 universal spell power. One of them gives you physical and magical resistance. And one of them gives you extra dodge equal to your listen skill. I recommend buying all three and using them. They have one hour use and one hour cooldown. As you can see all the way at the bottom it says they're supposed to expire at the end of 2019. Well guess what it's 2020 and I still have them. Even if they did expire, they're still very use useful. I recommend getting them. Next one over here. This is a bomb who basically you can throw and it adds vulnerability. Up next we have these two diamonds. These give you festival, plus two wisdom, stacking, and plus two intelligence. I highly recommend at least getting one of these and keeping it since it fits into any slot. These are very powerful and you can only get them from here. Next up we have these grenades. You can buy these for cheap and you can throw them at a group of players and they'll give them a skull or pumpkin head. Or if you can't stand it when it happens to you, you can buy this party pooper potion who prevents it from happening to you. One of the big uses I find is if you see with all the chocolate I've collected, I've got plenty, you can buy huge stacks of death ward potions or you can have infect critical wounds if you happen to be like a pale master. These are like your healing potions. Instead of the regular heal critical wounds, these are infect critical wounds or restoration. This takes away one negative level. These are great potions to have. You can buy a huge stack with all your extra chocolate, especially if you're using the Draft of Midnight. Sunflak Sunflask is a ghost touch projectile weapon. If you want to see more about it, Strimtom has an entire build using just this. Here we've got a potion who adds you plus 25 alchemical to your light and alignment spells. Oil of Incandescence is a temporary buff that adds 1d6 light damage to any weapon 
This is a temporary enhancement and it won't stack with other things like enhanced weapon or flaming weapons. Battle of Fear is a bomb that you can throw that if basically is a spell, the Phantasman Killer spell. The DCs are not that great. Next up, we have three variations of Summon Monster for level 4. You got the Gargoyle, the Shadow, or the Warg. Then you have a more powerful version of these for level 8. Again, same three, Gargoyle, Shadow, and Warg. Me, I would probably go for the Gargoyle. Last but not least is Draft of Midnight. This potion is extremely valuable if you want to collect chocolate. You run the first quest, the entrance quest, the main one, and you'll be stacked up on chocolate. Uh, you'll have to do at least one of each of the other four challenges to be able to afford it. Now to the wares. First up, we have a group of cosmetics. Each one of them, there's an armor, a hat, and a cloak. There's different colors. There's like these light blue, and the cloaks, by the way, happen to have, you have to use a dragon scale. Here's red, I've got the red cloak if you want to see how it looks. It's a pretty cool cloak. All the other cloaks have the same exact look, just with a different color, the highlight color. Anyways, they've got the same thing for green, And purple. They also bound to account, so they might be a nice cosmetic. Here we've got a hat. This is just a pure hat that gives you 5% discount on all of your spells cost. If you don't have anything better, it's great. Here's the hood that adds a nice boost to your dodge for like 20 seconds. Not too great because it doesn't last long. Here we've got another temporary clicky that adds a boost to your weapon. This one adds negative but again, since it's a temporary boost, will not add, oh sorry, will not stack with things like enhanced weapon or flaming blades. And this one happens to also be a cosmetic and there's two different versions of it. It's very cheap. It's a cool like mask that goes, it gives you like teeth in your, in your face. Here we've got like a cloak that actually is a clicky that gives you spell critical damage. 25% spell critical damage for a minute and a half. And if you're Warforged, there's a docent version of it. Exactly the same thing. Again, just if you happen to be Warforged or Bladeforged, you can use this one. If you really like that cosmetic look of having a pumpkin stuck in your head, you can buy a permanent one. Or if you just want to creep everybody out, you can put a spider on your head. I don't know. You can get a Doom Sphere pet. You also get the Spectre Diadem. Basically, like a little hat. Or these cosmetic wings. I don't know. If you're into these things, this is where you can get them. Here we have two staffs. Yeah, one, they're basically clubs. You can use as a clicky. Basically the same thing. Two different little versions of like these fire spells. You can try them out. Maybe they'll be effective. Next up, we've got Rune Arms. The Astral Projector, there's level 7 and level 21. The most important thing on this item is it says it has Ghostly. This makes your main hand weapon become Ghost Touch, both for melee and for ranged. This is very important. So if I have a weapon over here who's not Ghost Touch, I would have to keep on changing it out every time I would fight something who requires Ghost Touch. Or, if I can just change out my rune arm, I could keep my strongest weapon equipped at all time. So for me, personally, when I'm trying out my new build I'm working on right now, this happens to be a key piece of it a key item to use that will help me negate the problem of dealing with ghost touch. With dealing with ghostly enemies. Or I can just slot it with a ruby of ghost bane. Here we've got a big group of items. They all repeat themselves basically. You got these spectral longbow. These are basically Reaper items because they've got Ghost Bane and they're good against Evil Outsiders. You'll have to use the lower one to upgrade to the next one. So the higher up you go, the more upgrading you'll have to be doing. Now the same thing also on a Great Crossbow. They have the exact same stats, exact same base for each level. 
It's also a great axe. You'll notice it's made out of force. That means I believe this should be immune to oozes, but still needs to be verified. We also have a spectral warhammer. This is exactly this is exactly like all the ones before. Here we've got another item called the Cloak of Night. This stacks up starting with invisibility guard and then it adds incorporeality 10% and it starts stacking up more and more different things like death block and eventually it ends up with dodge and damage reduction and this is nightmare guard who basically can instantly kill certain enemies. It's a pretty cool cloak but you might need the cloak slot for something else but you might consider investing in this. Next up we have the Docent of Shadow. This is main meant for Pale Masters. But even if you're not a Pale Master, I do recommend getting this and I'll show you why in just a minute. As you can see it has Night Shield clicky on it. I'm going to scroll down for a second. There's a rolled version of this. Whoops. Here we've got the Shadow Robe. This is exactly the same thing but in a robe form. That means as long as you're not Warforged, you can wear this. Level 8 gives you a clicky for 8 minutes of Night Shield that protects you from Magic Missile. No matter what class you are, you don't have to have UMD to be able to use like a wand or something. This is 8 minutes. The one I recommend though is level 12. Two clickies of 12 minutes. This is great. You can get two of these. Or if you want to go above and beyond, you can get yourself to level 16. This is three clickies of 16 minutes each. That should be good enough. I'm still recommending getting the level 12 so you can already use it from level 12. And of course, if you're Warforged, then you would get the Docent. So probably get one of these and one of those, and you'll be covered when it comes to using Night Shield. You don't have to think about it anymore. So even if you play a melee character, somebody who cannot cast Night Shield or Shield to get rid of magic missiles, this is a perfect item. So here we've got the hand wraps. These are great for monks. These are focused on undead. They do undead bang and they do light damage. As they go up in level, they scale the amount of power that they have, and they have more light damage stacked into them. Also, of course, if you happen to have too many ingredients you don't know what to do with them, you can also always turn these into a collar for your dog. Just saying. So you've got a different type of weapon. This is a great club, if that somehow is a thing and does tendon slice which slows enemies and does some electric and freezing damage and also it cuts through the fortification eventually ending up at a pretty good club i can't really tell you how good this is in real life but it looks pretty good based on its stats here we have pick of in this light this is a light pick who has the exact same abilities as the hand wraps I don't know, maybe if you're playing a gnome and want to use a light pick. Here we have the Morning Star. Maybe if you're a cleric. Got Unholy, Smashing, and Piercing. The Smashing is crazy. Stacks up really high. That means it does bludgeoning damage. Here we got 19 D6 bludgeoning damage. I still don't think this is going to break the game or anything. It's just a Morning Star, but hey, I don't know. Maybe if you're dual wielding morning stars and playing as a ranger, then maybe this is a really good item. Here we've got the spectral deflector. Before I mentioned this astral projector who gave you ghostly. This time we've got a buckler. Now this does not give you level four. It only has ghost bane, so you can hit things with it. But once you get to level 12, it has ghostly. That means it turns the main hand weapon. So if you're swashbuckling, for instance, your main hand weapon now becomes ghost touch. As long as you have this buckler on it. So it's a pretty cool item, also gives you a 10% that'll miss you. Note that the lower levels do not have the ghostly on it though. They have permanent protection from evil. That will save you against the command. Here we've got the spectral dagger. Again, this goes back to all the reaper weapons, just like all the ones before. And it levels up to a pretty good Spectral Dagger, level 28. Next one, you have a Throwing Dagger. I guess these are all introduced around the Vasani Knife Fighter. So anybody wants it, it's 
especially if you're trying to do an alchemist thrown weapon character. This might be considered a good a good dagger. Here last we have two wands. First one does damage particularly against undead. You can level it up to a... This is an internal wand so you can use it endlessly as long as you rest and charge it up. I can't tell you exactly how good it is in real life and also there's a one which just does light damage. So it doesn't have to be against undead. Less damage of course than to disrupt undead but again it's an eternal one. Oh, got extra ingredients you want to try it out. Good luck. Maybe you want to make a eternal wand character who we'll just use the eternal wand to do damage. Anyways, that's going to be it. That's going to be my guide for the Night Revels festivals. Anyways, if you've been benefited from this guide or enjoyed this video, please consider hitting like and subscribing. I appreciate it very much. Anyway, that's going to be it for me. Take care. See you in the next video.